Lesson number 187, Surah Al-Furqan, ayah number 35 to 50. وَلَقَدْ and certainly أَتَيْنَا we gave Musa, Musa alayhi salam al-kitaba, the book وَجَعَلْنَا and we made مَعَهُ with him أَخَاهُ his brother هَارُونَ هَارُونَ alayhi salam وَزِيرًا an assistant Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Musa alayhi salam as a prophet to who? to Fir'aun, to the Bani Israel but Allah did not send Musa alone first of all he gave him the book which book is this? The Torah. And then he also made Harun السلام, as his wazir. Wazir from the root letter is wow, zai, ra, wizard. What is wizard? What is wizard? Burden, right? When there is a big load, like for example a heavy bag, can you carry it yourself? Maybe you can, but you'll be exhausted, you'll be burnt out by the end. What do you need? A helping hand. Right? It's your load, but someone is just helping you carry it. This is wazir. Wazir is an assistant. Someone who helps, like for example, a king or a ruler. Alright? Basically, a king or a ruler, they're in a very serious position. They have to make decisions, right? Important decisions. And they affect not just them, but the entire nation, the entire people. Correct? So those decisions better be good. Now what happens is that when a person is dealing with the problem themselves, they might make serious errors. So what do they need? Someone with whom they can discuss the problem with, right? Someone who can advise them, someone whom they can consult, and then they come to their decision. This is the role of the wazir. Wazir is not someone equal in authority. Wazir is someone who is lesser, right? But they are your helper. They carry the weight of the responsibility of the work with you because of the magnitude of the work, because of the difficulty of the work. So Harun السلام, was also a prophet. However, he was like an assistant prophet. Alright? So that Musa السلام, would not be alone because the task was tremendous. It was huge. First of all, going to Fir'aun was no easy thing. And then dealing with the Bani Israel was also not something easy. Not easy at all. So Allah gave him Harun as a wazir. Now if you go back to the previous ayat, we learned that the people of Makkah, they demanded that angels be sent to them. Correct? That they should see the angels, or they should see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then they will believe. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that Allah sent Musa salam with a wazir. He gave the Torah at once. But still those who did not want to believe, did they believe? No they didn't. فَقُلْنَا So we said, اِذْهَبَا Both of you go إِلَى القوم To the people. Which people? الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا Those who denied our signs. Allah already knew that Fir'aun and his people would deny the signs. But still Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent both of these prophets. فَدَمَّرْنَاهُمْ Then we destroyed them. تَدْمِيرَ With complete destruction. Utter destruction. دَمَّرْنَا تَدْمِيرَ Both of these words are from the same root. What are those letters? Dal mean ra. Tadmir is basically ashaddul ihlak, utter destruction, total destruction. Right? And basically dhammara is to suddenly attack. You know, you hear stories of a certain tribe that raided another tribe. You know, when you study the seerah, you hear these stories. Like for example, we learn about a particular tribe that raided, that suddenly attacked gave a surprise attack basically to the allies of the Muslims, right? Which led to the eventual conquest of Mecca, right? So this is Dammara. Why would the Arabs do this? Surprise attack. Why? Because the other is not prepared. They're sleeping. They just woke up. Correct? So when they've just woken up, they're not ready to fight back. It's very easy to defeat them. It's very easy to overcome them. And when you will defeat them, you will cause them total defeat. They will not be able to stand up back on their feet. They won't be able to fight back. So much so that they'll hardly be able to escape. This is why total destruction, what's the word used for that? Tadmir. Meaning, Fir'aun and his people, they were completely destroyed. Irreparable damage was caused. That civilization was completely annihilated. No people remained, no architects, no artists, no one remained. 
total devastation. وَقَوْمَ نُوحٍ And the people of Nuh also. Meaning the same happened with them. They too were destroyed. Why? When? لَمَّا وَنْ كَذَّبُ الرُّسُلِ When they denied the messengers. The people of Nuh were also destroyed when they denied the messengers. Notice, الرُّسُلِ is a plural of Rasul. Isn't it? How many prophets were sent to the people of Nuh? عليه السلام How many prophets? Only one prophet was sent to them. But Allah says they denied the messengers. Why? Because Nuh a.s. was the first messenger. And if the first messenger they denied, then what do you think they would do to the next messenger, and the next messenger, and the next messenger? What would they do? Deny them all. Correct? And also, given the length of time that Nuh a.s. was sent to them for, 950 years. 950 years. In that time, many messengers could have been sent. So, denying Nuh a.s. was like denying Many messengers. And also remember this rule. That if a person rejects one prophet of Allah, then it is as if they have denied all the prophets of Allah. Why? Because their belief in the prophets is incomplete. You understand? So when they denied the messengers, what happened? What happened? أَغْرَقْنَاهُمْ We drowned them. وَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ And we made them لِلنَّاسِ For the people آيَةً A sign We made the people of Nuh A sign for all people For all of mankind I mean if you think about it Thousands of years have gone by But still The story of Nuh a.s. Nuh a.s.'s ark Is this a well-known story? It is You'll find it in every language You'll even find it in almost every culture, in every faith tradition. Some mention of it. It's an ancient story. And in this is a lesson, a warning, a reminder. But many times that reminder, that lesson is ignored, and the entire focus is on what? The animals. Honestly. It's entirely on the animals. I mean, yes, this is something that we can teach children, for sure. But don't forget the lesson. We don't talk about the lesson, but we talk about other things. Or the entire discussion is about whether it was a flood that covered the whole world, or it was on a particular place on the earth. The lesson is what we need to remember. وَأَعْتَدْنَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ And we have prepared for the wrongdoers. عَذَابًا أَلِيمًا A painful punishment. What is that painful punishment? That as soon as these people were drowned, we learn in the Qur'an, أُغْرِقُوا فَأُدْخِلُوا نَارًا They were drowned and they were admitted into the fire. So the adab of the akhirah, in addition to what they suffered over here. Then, وَعَادًا And we also destroyed the people of Ad. Who were they? People of Hud a.s. وَثَمُودْ And the people of Thamud to whom Salih a.s. was sent. وَأَصْحَابَ الرَّسْ And the people of Ar-Ras. What is Ras? Ras is the name of a particular well. Alright? Or some say, Ras, from the root letters, Rasin Sin, is used for a well that is not really constructed. Not constructed in the sense that it's not built properly. You know, a well is not just a hole in the ground. It's not just a hole in the ground. It's got walls inside, and even underneath you have to go and build it properly so that there is a continuous source of water And in addition to that, also to make sure that it won't close in, it won't collapse. Because it's very easy for wells to collapse. When there's water, when there's rain or something like that, it can collapse very easily. So you have to make sure that it's firm and strong from inside and for that people have to go in. They have to go in and many people die in this process. So rust, it is said that it's an unconstructed well, a well that is not built. All right. Now who are the people of the well? Who are the people of the well? Some say that it's the people of Shu'ayb alayhi salam. Shu'ayb alayhi salam was also sent to them as a prophet. And some say that no, there were some other people. There is a difference of opinion concerning them. Allahu a'lam who they were, and that is exactly the point. Hmm? That we don't even know who they were, when they lived, what they did, but Allah mentions them, telling us that He destroyed them. Why? When they denied the Prophet that was sent to them. And not just the people of Ras, but وَقُرُونًا And generations, plural of Qarn, بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ Between that, كَثِيرًا Many. There were many other generations also. What do you mean? Assalamu alaikum. Uh, 
in school, I had to take a couple of archaeology classes and stuff. And um, in one summer class that I took, we were studying basically all the sites that they, not all of it's impossible, but majority of the sites that the archaeologists have worked on throughout the world. And every single era, millions of years ago, or recently, like a couple thousand years ago, we would always study a site. And then we'd study its people, its culture, the way they lived. And then my teacher would go, and then they just disappeared. And then we would move on. And it was like hundreds. And I just couldn't, like, I was sitting in the classroom, and I was so shocked. Like, they know about how they did their burials, but nobody knows what happened to them after. And then there is one site that I had to do a project on. So there was two um, generations, like one that was there, it disappeared. And then a couple thousand later, another one came and then also disappeared. So it was just really strange, subhanAllah. And they're all unknown. They they know what their clothes is like, their food, but nobody knows like what happened to them. They just abandoned where they lived. It's like houses are in perfect condition. Everything is in place, but the people are not there. They're missing. وَقُرُونَ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ كَثِيرًا Many, many generations between this time. And so many generations, we don't even know their names. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not told us about their details. No matter how much we study their remains, we cannot learn about them fully. So many generations. In Surah Ibrahim ayah 9, Allah says, أَلَمْ يَأْتِكُمْ نَبَأُ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ قَوْمِ نُوحٍ وَعَادٍ وَثَمُودٍ وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ لَا يَعْلَمُهُمْ إِلَّا اللَّهِ So many people that came after them, none knows them except for Allah. Why did they just disappear? What happened? Allah says, وَكُلًّا And each, ضَرَبْنَا We struck, لَهُ for it الْأَمْسَالِ The examples. Each community, each nation was given examples. Examples for what? For what purpose? For the purpose of explaining the truth to them. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent prophets to them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the truth clear to them, gave them the furqan. And to further clarify, Allah also gave examples. You know, when you, when you give examples, what does it mean? You really want the other person to understand. Isn't it? Like for example, in school also, so many times when you're learning about a new concept, if a teacher gives you multiple examples, then what happens? You understand. But when hardly any example is given, then what happens? You're unclear. You need to see something. You need something to relate with. And this is mathal. Allah gave amthal. Amthal. Meaning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not deprive them of guidance. He made it clear to them. He made it very clear to them. But when they chose to disbelieve, then وَكُلًّا تَبَّرْنَا تَتْبِيرَ Then each we destroyed with Total destruction. Now notice the word tatbi, tabarna, tabara. And what does this mean to break something to pieces? Small pieces. To crumble, destroy. So basically these people were destroyed only after they were warned. They were given proof after proof, clear evidence upon clear evidence, so that they would understand, but none of them believed. So in other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not destroy them for no reason. وَلَقَدْ And certainly, أَتَوْ They have already come upon. Who? The Arabs. عَلَى الْقَرْيَةِ On the town. Meaning they have passed the town. Which town? Allati which? أُمْطِرَتْ It was rained upon. مَطَرَ The rain of so the evil. The town that was rained with the rain of evil. أُمْطِرَتْ مَطَرَ From the root letters, mean طَرَ What does مَطَر mean? Rain. Notice the word umtirat, amtara. Abu Ubaidah, he said that amtara is used for rain of adab. And matara, the verb matara, over here matar is noun. Alright? Umtirat is a verb. Alright? So it's other form, amtara, it's used for rain of adab, of punishment. So they were rained with the rain of asaw, evil. What was his rain of evil? And what was his people? Who were these people? the people of Lut alayhi salam. And the people of Mecca, when they would travel to Asham for their trade journeys, they would pass by the ruins of these people. So Allah says, they've come upon, they've seen. 
Afalam yakunu yaronaha? Afalam did they not yakunu they were yaronaha they see it? Have they not seen it? Of course they have. But what have they learned? Nothing. Why? Because bal rather kanu they were la yarjuna they do not expect nushura resurrection. Nushur, nun shin ra, resurrection refers to life after death. So these people, the reason why they don't learn from these examples is because they don't believe in the hereafter. And when a person does not believe in the hereafter, then it does not matter what he sees, what he learns, what he studies, it doesn't affect him. You know, it's amazing how one person could come upon the remains of a previous people and he cannot help but cry and cry and cry. And then there's another person who's studying one thing after the other, but it doesn't affect his heart at all. What's the difference? One fears Allah and the other doesn't believe in Allah. One believes in the day of judgment and the other doesn't. In Surah Al-Safat, Ayah 137-138, we learn, وَإِنَّكُمْ لَتَمُرُّونَ عَلَيْهِمْ مُصْبِحِينَ وَبِاللَّيْلِ أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ Indeed, you pass by them in the morning and at night. Being you pass by all of these ruins, all of these signs, morning and night, will you not use reason? Will you not take a lesson? What happened to those people? Why did they just disappear? What happened to that civilization? Take a lesson. But, وَإِذَا رَأَوْكَ And when they see you, O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِنْ يَتَّخِذُونَكَ They do not take you, إِلَّا except who's one in ridicule. Meaning when they see you, the moment they see you, they start making fun of you. Why? They say, Ahada? Is this Allah the one who Ba'ath Allahu? Allah has sent Rasulah as a messenger? Out of all people, He is the one whom Allah chose as a messenger? Not possible. It's not possible that He would be a messenger. So why would they say this? They would say this in order to belittle, in order to insult the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And look at the word Ahada. Hada. You know, when something is close, nearby, yes, you use the word hadha. But when you say this about a person, hadha, it is basically to show that they have no worth. They have no value in front of you. Alright? So they would say, this guy, this man, he, him, he has been chosen as a prophet? How could he be a prophet? If someone was to be a prophet, then it should have been somebody else, some other great man. But Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they would say, what money does he have? And he was an orphan, and so on and so forth. أَهَذَا الَّذِي بَعَثَ اللَّهُ رَسُولًا What do we see here? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was made fun of. And many times it happens that if a person stands up to speak the truth, if a person gets up to advise people, instantly people ridicule him. They mock at him. They say, oh, what authority do they have? What right do they have? Well, they may have something valuable to say that perhaps you cannot say, perhaps you cannot deliver, so at least lend an ear and listen. In Surah Al-Anbiya, Ayah 36, also something similar is mentioned. وَإِذَا رَآكَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِنْ يَتَّخِذُونَكَ إِلَّا هُزُوَا When they see you, the moment they see you, they start making fun of you. You know, you wonder, if the Prophet ﷺ went through this, that the moment people saw him, they made fun of him. How could he continue like that? How could he? You know, if a person faces such level of insult and mockery, they can't continue for long. So what gave the Prophet ﷺ strength to continue? What gave him that determination? What do we learn in the previous ayah? What was it? It was the Qur'an. In kada. They say, in, indeed, kada, he almost layubilluna. Surely he led us astray. Notice the word in. How did I translate it? Indeed, why not if and why not not? Look at the ayah. In kada la yudilluna. La. Okay? La means surely. So whenever you're confused about in, how you're supposed to translate it, if you see an illa coming after, then it will be not. Right? And if you see a la, lamb coming after, it will be translated as indeed. So they say, in kada la yudilluna. Indeed, he almost led us astray. And aliyatina from our gods. Lola, if it had not been. And that sabarna alayha. We were patient over it. 
Meaning, had we not been patient and firm over our idolatry, this man, Muhammad wasallam, he would have led us astray from our idols. Look at them. What are they saying? That, oh, he's so intelligent, but we're more intelligent than him. He's so clever, he almost convinced us to leave idolatry, but we are more intelligent than him, so we are still firm on our idolatry. Look at their sabr. What is sabr? To remain attached to something. Right? And sabr is habs and nafs to control oneself. To force oneself to remain attached to something. That no, I cannot leave it. I cannot let go of it. So what is it that they were clinging to? That they were holding on fast to? It was their shirk. And come on. Don't we need some sabr over Allah's obedience? Look at these mushriki. Now they're saying we are so patient on our idolatry. Here is a man speaking against it, trying to convince us to leave it, but we are so firm. Can we say this? That I am so firm, alhamdulillah, on such and such, that even though people, they make fun of me or they uh, discourage me, but still I am firm on it. Allah says, وَسَوْفَ يَعْلَمُونَ Very soon they will know. حِينَ يَرَوْنَ الْعَذَابَ When they will see the punishment. مَنْ أَضَلُّ سَبِيلًا Who is actually astray in way, more astray in way, they say that Muhammad sallallahu almost led them astray. Allah says tomorrow they will know who is really astray. Are they astray? Or is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa astray? They will find out. In Surah Sa'ad, Ayah 6, we learn, وَانْطَلَقَ الْمَلَأُ مِنْهُمْ أَنِمْشُوا وَاصْبِرُوا عَلَىٰ آلِهَتِكُمْ إِنَّ هَذَا لَشَيْءٌ يُرَاد That the mala, the elite, the eminent ones amongst them, they went forth saying, continue and be patient over the defense of your gods. Be patient. So what's the lesson we learn over here? That if the people of Makkah had so much sabr on wrong, we also need to have some sabr over haq. And is sabr easy? It's not easy. It's difficult. But you got to do what you got to do. You can't let go of it just because people are opposing you, just because people are making fun. And where do you get your strength from? From Qur'an and from good company. Because you see over here, they're encouraging one another to be patient over idolatry. So we need to encourage each other to be firm on, to be patient on the truth also. And we need to get our strength from the Qur'an also. And if you look at the theme of the surah so far, the ayat that we have studied, we learn about the importance of the right friendship, right? And also the importance of having a proper, solid, continuous connection with the Book of Allah. Because these two will be your source of strength. Otherwise, it will be very difficult. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us strength. Okay, I gave you guys some homework. Gave you girls some homework. In our last class, what was that homework? You had to research about a particular creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, some creation that shows how Allah has perfectly created something and perfectly decided everything for it so that it can live, it can survive, it can thrive, it can continue to live. So I heard that some people did research on crocodiles. Who was that? Who was that? Where's the group in charge? Where are the people who did research on crocodiles? Oh, okay. So can you share with us, please? When I heard the word crocodile, I was like, cool. Because I have something very interesting to share with you as well about crocodiles. Okay. Go ahead. So the research we did, it said that crocodiles, they came into extinct existence like 240 million years ago. They were around at the same time as the dinosaurs, but they survived all the things that like wiped out the dinosaurs and whatnot. And also, when talking about the jaw and like, the teeth of the crocodile, they're made to crush the animal that's between the jaws and they can just swallow it whole. And they're like stones in their stomach that grind up the solid animal in their stomach so they don't need to chew it. But even though they have such a strong jaw, at the same time, the muscles that open the jaw are really weak, so you can hold it closed with just an elastic band. So that's kind of, it kind of shows that, you know, as dangerous as an animal is, it has its weaknesses, so there's ways to protect yourself from it. But then also you look at the animals that the crocodile eats and you realize that they can't do that. They can't hold the jaw shut, obviously. So it's kind of, it protects the creatures that are above it in the food chain while allowing it to eat what it needs to, to survive. 
was and then they were crocodiles they have a seven teeth and seven um, teeth yeah and when they miss any teeth they it uh, reappears again and i was discussing with my sister that we should you know you know dentists and you know scientists should work on that they are you know they are to also come back again after that subhanallah one more thing about crocodiles it's kind of off the topic uh, sheikh tawfiq choudhry he recently shared online that crocodiles many scholars actually considered them to be halal did you know that because they are creatures of the water I mean, they can live outside of water, but their maulid maskan is the water. They cannot survive without water. So just like sharks, even though they eat human beings also, they're halal because they're born in the water. They cannot live without water. Crocodiles are also like that. And he had actually posted a picture of a whole crocodile that was being skinned and another crocodile that was fully cooked. All right. So the Malikis and many contemporary scholars also, they allowed it. They consider it to be lawful, halal. So he asked a question that anyone want crocodile kebabs? Right? Huh? I wonder. You know, somebody asked me, would you eat it? I said, I might. I might. I mean, if it's halal, if it's before me, then if it's cooked, then why not? Why not give it a try? Right? Okay. Somebody researched on penguins. Yes. Where's the microphone? Assalamu alaikum. I actually didn't research because I wasn't here and I didn't know the question, but I remember about the penguins that they travel a long distance to lay their eggs and then the father stays there through the winter, the long winter. The father, yes, stays and they hold the eggs under them and then the mother goes back and come back after the eggs hatched for bringing food for them. That's what I remember. And it's amazing how they have to hold the egg on their feet. Isn't it amazing? And then even when the chick is born, it stays on the feet because the ground is basically ice. Right? And what I don't understand is why do they have to go all the way there in order to lay their eggs? Why there? Why not somewhere else? I mean, there must be a reason, isn't it? One reason that I see is that in that region, I don't think human beings would go and live there right, have their children over there, they'd rather be in warmer places, but with the penguins going over there, marching there, back and forth, you have a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doing tasbih over there also. So all over the world, there is something or the other glorifying its Lord. Anybody else would like to share? Yes. So, uh, at, uh, during grade 12, we were learning in physics that geckos, um, when they climb up walls, they have a certain physics that occurs between the walls and the gecko's feet. So, what rescue teams right now are trying to do is to design suits so that they're similar to what geckos have on their feet, so that we're able to save people that are on, probably on buildings or something, and save them when they're in trouble. Now, all of these three are about animals, right? But in the ayah, what do we learn? خَلَقَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ Right? He created everything. فَقَدَّرَهُ تَقْدِيرَ So it's not just the animals. Those of you who still have to do your homework, and next week, by the way, I will take it up, inshallah. Right? Inshallah. بِإِذْنِ So you could do your research on some plant, water, snow, anything, whatever you want, inshallah. I would urge all of you to watch the documentary that was made, I don't know exactly when, called The March of the Penguins. That will teach you a lot about the penguins. So old, such an old documentary. Huh?